This is Duke University. Bitcoin's in the news a lot, and it's quite mysterious. It is the decentralized way to uh, exchange ownership. That's the best way to uh, describe it. Some people call it um, a peer-to-peer -peer method. So there's no middle person. So usually we think when we transact with a credit card, um, there is a middle person, the bank, because the bank has got to issue the credit card and grant you the, the credit. And indeed, there's another middle person, and that's the central government, because they provide the actual dollars. So this is decentralized. It's a way to securely transact uh, between two parties. Let's actually go through a transaction. What happens? I decide to buy lunch for some of my graduating students, and I'm going to need a Bitcoin to do that. So I go into a third-party application and say, I want to buy Bitcoin. And what they do is they collect some information, and I transfer from my bank account enough money to buy Bitcoin. And that goes into the digital wallet, and it's got a key in it. So I tell my student, send me a public key, and then I will transfer part of a Bitcoin to you so I can buy your lunch. They get a key, and it's kind of like a, an email address, but the unique thing is that the email address changes every single time. So this key would only be used once. They send me the key, and then on my mobile phone, click a button, it's transferred over, and I gave them a nickel, 1 20th of a, a Bitcoin to go buy lunch. So they've got that Bitcoin, they go to the restaurant, and maybe they're charged four Bitcoin cents for it. They present their mobile phone, it's scanned, and it's withdrawn from their account. Now the interesting thing is that for these transactions to actually work. So when I transferred the nickel of the Bitcoin to my student, it goes out to the network, and everybody in the network actually verifies that I've got this nickel to actually spend. Okay, so it's secure. And when my students go to the restaurant to pay for their lunch with the Bitcoin that I actually gave to them, again, it goes to the network, and the network verifies that they've actually got it. The retailer gets the Bitcoin and then basically translates it back into US dollars. It is a very efficient way to transact. And the retailers love it. You know, if you're like a restaurant operating on a very thin margin, and then the credit card company takes 3% of that margin, that's a huge hit. So you way prefer to use um, some sort of cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, where the, the transaction fee is trivial and it really helps you.